So many thanks uh, for uh, paying this time to our readers and um, first of all we, uh, we got to, to talk about something you were talking about in your speech there inside uh, Inspirational. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about the structure and the way of working in your agency yeah. and um, uh, you've talked about many things but uh, I miss some some two okay the first one uh, what about uh, keeping true or being true being sincere with the work and with your colleagues well I mean I, uh, I think in a way maybe I talked about it without actually using that word because I think it's really really important I mean I think that's a core of doing that sort of work that I was talking about um, in there earlier uh, being sincere in the sense that really all you're aiming to do is solve the problem in the best possible way focus on the, the, the core of the idea and letting, making sure that that is uh, what solves the problem so to me that's sincerity in communication doing what is uh, genuinely right for the, uh, for the for the problem at hand uh -huh. and uh, there's another question because uh, you're talking about responsibility yeah. and uh, people the creative uh, teams are the responsible for their work there yeah. is not nobody um, um, over them yeah. uh, telling them it is right it is not right yeah. so uh, responsibility I think uh, uh, is something to do with not being comfortable at work also. Yeah, yeah. and how did you manage this yeah um well, first of all, I'd like to say, I mean, I guess it depends on how you use the word comfortable. Uh, we want everyone to work at Fosman Wood Fosman be very comfortable in the sense that you want it to feel like a place where you're secure and you almost feel at home and you're amongst friends, even family in a sense. So, um, in that sense, I think we really want people to feel comfortable. On the other hand, the other way of using the word is maybe what you're referring to. Being comfortable in the sense that you feel that this is it, I know what I'm doing, I'm not going to change, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. That's a way of uh, being comfortable that we try to really avoid and we don't want people to feel that way. We want people to always keep focus on different ways of doing things and hopefully better ways of doing things. How do you find the right people to work with you in the agency? Because how do you select the talent? Yeah, uh, no, there's no magic formula to that really. Uh, uh, people either contact us or we contact people, but when we meet people we try to see uh, beyond the uh, portfolio, beyond the work that they've done previously and also really focus on, on the sort of the right personality, I suppose. Being people that are very comfortable in collaborating and that feel that that is the way forward. In a way, um, I suppose you could say that we almost have a like an ideology of, of a way of working and, and uh, not everyone has to uh, subscribe to that ideology but if you're going to work with us you probably have to otherwise it's going to be very difficult so I think we talk a lot about the way we work and, and we try to get a sense if that person is willing to do to work in, in the same in the same manner. Uh -huh. uh, you are not uh, a digital agency but you've been uh, considered as the best digital agency for for many years so how did you can how can you do this yeah because I there are many technology behind yeah. your work yeah. also but uh, yeah. how did you manage I think this comes goes back to a little bit what we talked about earlier uh, being sincere about the problem trying to just find the best possible solution to the problem so not sort of getting stuck into a, a certain way of working if you, if you keep focusing on the problem trying to figure out the best way of solving Holding it, then you're going to find that your range of tools is much, much bigger, and you've got to be willing to pick up whatever tool is applicable for that uh, for that situation. I think that's why, uh, in the sort of world we're living in, it'd be very uh, crazy for us not to put digital as one of the main tools of, of, of creative communication. Mm -hmm. You are not a Chinese agency, but I think you you've made a probably one of the best um, Chinese advertising. Uh, pieces I've ever uh, I've ever uh, uh, watched. Uh, how did you manage to do that? Because you are 300 people, you are located, you are based in in Sweden, and uh, how do, did you manage to to, to get to, to this idea and to connect with the problem uh, so so nicely? Um, I'm talking about the left behind for Yes, of course. Um, well, thank you first of all. Uh, I also think it's a really lovely piece of work. Uh, I think the um, 
There's a few different ways of answering that question. One is very sort of um, pragmatic. We we had an unusual, uh, unusually much time. Uh, you know, we had, we had quite a bit of time, so we were able to send a team, the team that was working on it, to China to really sort of try to immerse the culture and understand. Now, of course, it would be naive to think that you can go to China for a week or two and understand, you know, one of the oldest cultures in the world. So, of course, it's not as simple as that, but at least it started there. And we really sort of took the problem seriously and tried to be sincere, the word you, you've been using. Uh, uh, so we tried to do that and we tried to understand really what's going on in China. And I think sometimes the combination of focusing on what's going on in a country, but also having a, uh, an objective view can create this sort of... Uh, uh, this sort of positive explosion in a sense. I guess that's where this, uh, the magic of this idea came from. Uh, trying really to understand the culture, but also remembering that we have an objective view on it and therefore we can see things that Chinese people might not see about themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got uh, some, uh, some idea about your uh, works uh, for uh, Volvo, yeah. for Volvo trucks. I must say that I've never seen a Volvo truck so playful and funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, how do you manage the work for this client? Because they are industrial, they are B2B, yeah. and, uh, but the, the, the adverts connect with people. So, yeah. uh, how do you do that? For example, the first one, the, yeah. the, 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 the split yeah. of uh, Bandam, yeah. and the second one this year, I found your work in, uh, in Cannes Lions, yeah. and uh, this girl playing with the truck. Yeah. So, yeah, I think. And how um, does does your client uh, f um, allow you to do this with the brand? Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, it's hard to answer that question really shortly. Uh, I'll try. I think again, it comes down to um, really doing the the insight work properly, uh, probably uh, properly beforehand, and um, giving planning or or uh, strategic work as much space and time as possible. Really, the epic split came. Very, very simplified. It came down to the understanding that the people who um, buy the trucks would not be our target audience. It's all the people that surrounds them that uh, somehow talks to them and influences them. So we realized that the best way of selling a truck would be to talk to people that do not buy a truck. Uh, the family members that would say to their mom and dad, look, I saw a really cool ad on TV. Or someone else saying, listen, I don't want you to drive in a truck that's dangerous. I really want you to be in the safest possible place in your work. So talking to the people around them and thereby uh, getting into the core of the of the communication was the sort of the, the, the initial insight when it came to selling trucks in general I think for us uh, and then beyond that uh, again it's some kind of creative magic that I don't really know how it works and I'm, I, the team who did that work I think did an amazing job I, I don't know how they came up with it but they did very well so you you got 300 people but you do also research in which way yeah that's true and also we're, we're about 300 that's correct uh, but that's with subs subsidiaries and so on so the ad agency really is more 130 people maybe so even smaller than that and yeah we have researchers we have a team of researchers maybe four or something like that we have three or four planners so of course these are people who are focusing on this aspect of the job but again it really comes down to everyone because it's a collective way of working so we all have to try to immerse ourselves in the in the problem and the understanding of the problem so we try to help each other out uh, living inside that an agency is a creative hook it, it's also a business have, are you thinking about, uh, when you think about the scale, are you thinking about growing in which way? Uh, yeah, we are. Uh, we've recently uh, formed a partnership with uh, MDC Partners, which is a... Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, they're not a holding company, I don't know what the correct term is, I'm afraid. Uh, but the whole reason for that partnership is to be able to grow and, and really try to export our way of working. Because we do feel that people are interested in it um, abroad. We do feel that the work that we're doing makes a difference and sometimes maybe pushes the way advertising can be a bit forward. So we're excited about trying to bring that out on a bigger scale and trying to work that way um, more globally and internationally. So yeah, we're trying to do that and we think that would be really fun to, to be able to take that one step further. But you are thinking about doing this from the bottom to the top, yeah. not from the top to the bottom, I think. So you are not thinking about being bought uh, by a very big, big, big multinational? No, or yes. that's right. We really, we kind of... 
you know, in trying to analyze yourself is very difficult, but we tried to and we realized that the one thing we had that was unique was our way of organizing the agency, the way of working. That was unique, that was different to everyone else. And we realized that in, if that's the case, then maybe that's the reason why we're doing um, relatively good work. So that's, we need to stay really true to that. And if we're going to grow, if we're going to export ourselves, that's what we're going to export. The idea of um, working collectively, the, the organizing the agency so that everyone has responsibility. We, if we lose that, I think we, it doesn't matter what the name of the agency is, we're going to lose the, the quality. We need to really hold on to that. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. So, um, and the last question, what does a prize mean for your agency? So, just a prize or what what means? Um, I don't know. I think it's awards and prizes are a bit strange because they are, uh, you know, the very essence of them is that they are uh, retroactive. You're looking at something that's already happened. So it's a little bit strange in a way to focus on them at all. On the other hand, of course, um, they're important in, in the sense that um, there's not so many ways of objectively um, rating the, the quality of the agency. So we have to accept that these are the tools, these are the ways of doing it. So by looking at how well we perform in, in uh, award shows, we know how we sort of rate ourselves against other agencies around the world. So in that sense, it's, it's a tool, uh, but also, of course, it's fun. It's fun to win prizes, it's fun to hear someone say you did a good job. So um, that's, that's one of the motivating factors, I think, in, in all the work that we do. So um, um, we uh, want to thank you for your time. I hope our readers are interested in, in knowing how you are getting all those prizes, all, all the prizes you are getting, because you are keeping true. So I thank think it's, it's, it's another way of thank work. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.